everyone. Today we are going to review how to use the library card catalog at BYU. The last time we did this training was in October of 2014 and it's now 2017 and several things have changed. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is go to BYU, their, their um, search. So we're going to go to lib.byu.edu and this is where you are going to end up. Now, if you are around and have a BYU ID number, you can also log in right here. But for those of you that are watching that aren't even close to BYU, you're okay just to look this way. So what we have here is the landing page. And normally when we think of card catalogs, at least those of us over a certain age, this is what we think of. Remember those? Oh my goodness. They were so nice, elegant, organized, and you know, really didn't have to learn, know too much to use it. If you could say the ABCs or you, if you could sing the ABC song in your head, you were in good shape. But nowadays, this is what the card catalog looks like. It's this. So let's embrace change. So we want to take a look. There are tabs over here on both sides, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. It's very, very user-friendly. And if you have questions, you can just, you can chat right here or email, phone, the library. And here are some facts, services. So there's many ways that you can, that you can use this library. The first thing we're going to do is just an easy search. So we're going to go right in here and I'm going to type the story of an old farm. Whoops, I got to be able to type though, of an old farm. And then I'm just going to hit either enter or just the magnifying glass. That's just a simple search. And as we take a look, you notice on the left hand side, you can, there's many, many filters you can use. I'm just going to look down here and see if I can find what I'm looking for. This is a book about my husband's family. And here it is right here. And actually here's an addition to the index, but this is the book that, that I want. And it's amazing to me how not too many years ago, I had to go to the Family History Library in Salt Lake and actually pull this off the shelf and have them copy it for me, or I copy pieces out of it. Now it is available and we can take a look at it. So if we go right here and just look, there are many things you can find out. It's in micro, fat, micro format and it tells you all the information about it tells you on the floor, it's on floor two north in the microfiche. You can request an item, you can, there's actions, request an item, but other titles, if you look down here, it's categorized under genealogy and local history. The subjects, you've got the Melik family, actually Melik family, they changed the way they spelled their names a few times. It's in English, it was created in 1984 and it has genealogical appendix and there's a general note and see the different ways they spelled my husband's last name. Also, if you keep scrolling, here's a map so that you can see where it is actually located. It's really nice. And if you want to see full map, it will come up at some point. There you go. And you can just cruise around to see where you need to go. Okay. So that was really easy. That was just a simple search. So now let's go ahead and try something a little bit harder. I want early America memories of a coal miner's daughter. This book was written. I found out about this book from, I guess she's a cousin a couple of times removed. And I had no idea it even existed. So... We're going to go ahead and do a simple search again and looking around here and I'm seeing coal and interesting books about the coal fields, but I'm not seeing what I want. So I'm going to keep scrolling down. I could also use filters on the left hand side to help me find it. But this one I do know is not in the BYU library. So what I want to do, there's different, there's different sites here. If I go to library catalog, that would take me to all the different libraries that BYU has. And so 
I don't want to do that, but you could do that. Whoops. I got to go back to my original. America. Memories of a coal miner's daughter. Okay. And we're back. Maybe. Okay, we're going to go clear to the bottom. I said you've got filters on the side you can play with those what I want to do is Google Scholar was if I was here at BYU I would have my my ID and my sign in I want to check other libraries so this is going to check WorldCat for me and WorldCat is a great option it's like one big huge library on steroids and right here is early America memories of a coal miner's daughter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to see where that is located. Okay, so I have my location of where I live and I look and there's one copy and it is at Kent State University in Ohio. Now, I do know that there's probably very little chance that I am going to get to Kent State University anytime soon seeing is it, it is 1500 miles away and even though my husband is from Ohio I probably will not make a trip back to Kent State just to get that book so the option that we have is we can use interlibrary loan if you've never used interlibrary loan it is fairly straightforward and simple to do you can go to any most any public library I know I went to my local library a couple of years ago and I think it cost me two dollars and what they do they have connection the um, libraries are all connected and they all loan library books to one another so I was able to order it there also you can you can order through BYU interlibrary loan now the rules get for inter interlibrary loan get tweaked off and on so you have to kind of check and see what the rules are. At one point it was just genealogy books you could do interlibrary loan for free. Other times I've heard it's regular books. So you'll just want to maybe um, chat, get on the chat feature of the library and just ask what the current rules are for interlibrary loan. So when you want to do interlibrary loan, and this, this is whether you're at BYU or at your public library, you're going to need some information. So we can get the details here. It's a biography. Um, the author is Catherine Milowskis, and it gives you an OCLC number. This is the this is the the number for that WorldCat has assigned to it. Also, there are ISBN numbers. This one doesn't have it. ISBN numbers. It's an international standard book number, and since 1970, each book that has been published has been given a unique ISBN number and they used to be 10 digits long in 2007 the ISBN numbers turn changed to have 13 digits okay so but we have so I have so you'll want to have the name of the book or the title of the book the author you'll want to have either the OCLC number or the ISBN number when you go to order this book and at BYU the interlibrary loan department is right next to the circulation desk just um, through a different door and like I said at your library it will probably just be at the counter you just talk to the librarians okay so let's show one other thing we're gonna go back that's WorldCat And we're just going to go back to the BYU library catalog again. And what we want to do is we want to do, we want to see what else is in the library. So we're going to do an advanced search. So we come right here to this little drop down arrow that is advanced search. And we'll click on that. And as you can see, this was auto filled in, but let's, let's try something else. Okay, with the advanced search, you can search by many different fields. You see title, author, creator, subject, call number, ISBN number, and you can also look for things that you want your keywords to contain these words. 
I'm interested in Lithuania. That is my heritage. And see, so you can also filter more, but I'm just going to go with go with this for right now. But instead of a book, I think I want a map. So I want the type right here. I'm going to come to this little drop down and I'm going to take it down to maps. Notice that there's many, many types of information you can find. You can search books, articles, audio, images, journals, newspapers, all of those things. I just, I just want a map at this point. So it changed it to map. But this can be in any collection. They do give you the options of all of these different collections. But I'm just going to go for any collection. Now, you can change the language. I need to have it in English because I'm not really great in any other language. And I'm not worried about a date. However, you can change these to reflect where you, if you've got something specific. I also want to include in include results that the library doesn't have access to. Now, I would use that if I were, if I, I forgot to show, but when I, when I looked for Early America Memories of a Coal Miner's Daughter, I looked for it in the BYU library and they didn't have it. And so I came here to advanced search and I included results the library doesn't have access to. And that's why I was able to, that's how I end up with World Cat. So we're looking for, we're going to get rid of this. That's just going to confuse everything. We're doing an advanced search any field that contains Lithuania, but we want a map. We're going to go ahead and hit search. And we have quite a few options. The first one that comes up is a map by the um, CIA. And I just want to see what that looks like. These are in the BYU library right here. We also have that option to go to these other, these other places and the option to go to WorldCat. But what I want to do is I want to go back up here to Lithuania and I want to just click on that and see what it has to tell me. Okay, so we've got a map collection. There's three copies available. The creation date was 1991 and it's going to show me where it is. Remember if we wanted to see the full map, we could just click on it right there. But it is in the map file there's six holdings on the second floor, and it's in area floor 2C, which is right here. Okay. There are many, many ways that you can search in the BYU library, and hopefully you will get more comfortable as you go along. If you want to learn how to search by keywords or Boolean key operators, there's a great site at BYU called iLearning and their library tutorials. And you can practice these at home, but if you're looking, there's all of these different, different subjects. The one that is really helpful, keywords, how to search with keywords, so that you might be able to find that information that you're looking for. BYU is a great library and there's so much that is accessible all around the world. And between BYU library, it's not the only, only library, but it's a great university library. Then you've got the option of your public libraries for interlibrary loan. And then of course you have got WorldCat, which is a great, great library. So rather than missing this and mourning its demise, let's go ahead and embrace online system. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.